So let me know if this has ever happened to you. You decide to start something new, like a sport, or playing a musical instrument, or maybe learning a new language. So you buy all the gear you need, you gather the best resources that you can find. Perhaps you even sign up for an online class, and you get so excited about it that you can barely sleep. At first, it goes great. You feel like you can spend hours practicing and you don't get bored. But sooner or later, you get busy. It becomes harder and harder to find the right time for your new hobby. And it just doesn't light up your passion like it used to. Before you know it, months or even years have passed by and you are stuck in the exact same place you were before. I totally know how you feel. I started learning guitar this year, and at the beginning I was so excited. I learned some songs, but lately I feel like my shiny new guitar has just been gathering dust. However, in this fascinating conversation I had with teacher Tiffany, you'll see that it doesn't need to be like that. My main desire is to help other people. I feel like I'm on this earth to help other people flourish and to do well. And my job at NASA was great. My boss was amazing. The situation was great. It was a very good job. And I liked what I did. But I remember one day I was sitting at my desk and I had finished a project and, and I was like, there has to be more. Just like my new hobby of playing the guitar, I have often felt stuck in other life situations as well. Some days it's still difficult, but I figured out how to break out of it. And so has Tiffany from Speak English with Tiffany. In this lesson, we'll share the things we learned that may help you if you're feeling stuck in your English and wondering if you will ever be able to speak this language like a native speaker. You will not want to miss this lesson packed with incredible insights to help you move out of your comfort zone and become an advanced speaker. So, without further ado, Tiffany, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. Tiffany, I thought I'd start by asking you, what do you recommend learners do so that they can start breaking out of the intermediate level? There are a few things that I suggest. Yes, it's based on the same idea. Kind of get out of the books and then experience and explore more real and natural English conversation. So. Um, watch more English television programs. Um, I also encourage students to start more conversations. Um, and I know sometimes English learners, again, you're so focused on making mistakes that you don't want to, or you're shy, too shy to start conversations with native English speakers. It's not about starting a conversation with the purpose of, I need you to be my English partner. Instead, I try to encourage students, for example, if you're interested in cooking, if you're interested in sports, if you're interested in art, whatever your interest is, Facebook is a great place to go. Go to Facebook, find groups related to those topics. Don't find English groups related to those topics, not like for English learners. Find the groups where actually native English speakers are and then observe the conversations that are being had under certain posts and you'll kind of understand the flow like, okay, this is how native English speakers talk about this subject and then join the conversation. No one has to know that you're not a native English speaker and you don't have to tell them that you're not a native English speaker. Just start talking, enjoy and join in on the conversation. So it, two things happen. First, you gain a confidence and moving from intermediate to advanced, one of the main things students may not realize is confidence is super important because mm -hmm. you're already very intelligent. I, and I, I try to emphasize this as much as possible because I have had so many students, even students that have been crying in front of me because of their frustration, that they studied English so long and they're, they feel stupid, they feel like they're not smart. And I say, stop. You do realize that you know your language perfectly. Again, we know that you're always adapting and learning more. Now you're mm -hmm. learning a second or a third or a fourth language being English. You're far more intelligent than you realize. You're telling mm -hmm. your brain to switch to learn another language. So that fact, when students realize that, wait a minute, I am intelligent. Wait a minute, this is amazing what I've done so far. 
it creates this confidence within them. And once that confidence is there, suddenly they start to access all of the English they've already placed within their brains because there's a confidence, they start trusting themselves. So as English teachers, I feel like our job is to guide students. Basically the student is a focus. You and I, as the mm -hmm. teacher, we're literally, as the teachers, we're literally just guiding them along their path, their journey. Right. So I try to tell students, don't lean on me. Let me teach you something and you run with it. You move forward. Remember that you are awesome. So again, moving from intermediate to advanced, you must have confidence in yourself. When that confidence is there, you'll start trusting what you've already learned, the vocabulary, the expressions, yes, the grammar rules, the structures you've learned, and you'll start putting them into practice a lot faster. So by mm -hmm. going into these Facebook groups or whatever group you find again, with English people, English speaking people, you'll gain confidence to join the conversation. And the more you do that, the more you realize, wait a minute, I'm already moving to the advanced level and I just didn't realize it. Exactly what you're saying, going out and saying, what am I passionate about? Let me go find people who are yes. also passionate about this and we can discuss it in English. So you're not yes. asking people, it, it's really, we go to the point of being an English learner to an English speaker because you're using that English mm. for an end goal of connecting to your passion. I like that. I like that phrase. Yeah, it's very true. Very true. I hope you're enjoying Tiffany's recommendations. Our goal is to help learners just like you to become confident, fluent speakers. Just like real lifer Palak Sharma, who has binge watched our videos. That's why every week we create lessons so that you can understand fast spoken English, be understood by anyone and connect to the world. So make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any new lessons. And if you want to listen to the full interview with Tiffany and follow the transcript, make sure to download our app for free. Now check out this golden tip that she gave. Another thing is to recording more videos. This is something <laughs> that when you're not around a lot of English speakers, um, you feel like, ah, I, somebody else has a better bigger advantage than I do because they live overseas. No, it doesn't matter. Take your phone out and record yourself. Mm -hmm. You'll be amazed the psychological <laughs> stress <laughs> that students go through when they first have to record themselves. It doesn't Very matter true. if you're intermediate or advanced, you have to record yourself. Mm -hmm. I experienced the same thing. It's like you, you lose your words, you feel uncomfortable. And again, it goes back to that confidence. It's okay to make a mistake. Even native English speakers make mistakes and we just keep talking. It's okay. Mm -hmm. So recording yourself is also another way to improve because you can build your confidence, trust what you're learning and what you're saying. And then you also have a catalog. You can look back. Hey, this is how I sounded before. Now a month later, this is how I sound. What happens? You build confidence in yourself and you realize I have improved. All right, so at the beginning of this video, I mentioned how sometimes we want to start something new, but we keep postponing it. Just like happened to me with the guitar earlier this year. Taking the first step is especially hard for perfectionists. I asked Tiffany how she was able to put her perfectionism aside so that she could move from intermediate to advanced in Korean. Before you listen to her insightful advice, let me know down in the comments below. Do you consider yourself a perfectionist? Which strategies do you use to deal with that? Be sure to see what other learners have said. Maybe some of their advice could really help you. I think that learning a foreign language, especially one that's as different from your native language like Korean is from English, requires mm -hmm. making a lot of mistakes in order to, to progress. So how did you overcome that perfection and get comfortable with making mistakes? You know, I chuckled because it's a great question. Um, on a scale of one to 10, it was a 15. <laughs> it was extremely hard. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of the things I teach and the principles that I base my lessons on come also from my experience learning another language. I was 27 right. when I started learning Korean. So I was an adult learning Korean and it was difficult. So I, I mentioned before with the grammar, how I don't focus on grammar and I try to focus on creative thinking. That also comes from my experience learning Korean because I hit this plateau. Mm -hmm. 
because I was only focused on grammar. So what I teach students and what I say is because I've literally experienced it and I feel like I totally understand my students' emotions. Once I got to about level four or level five, around the intermediate levels and moving into the advanced levels, I hit this plateau because I was so focused on the structures. I wouldn't speak unless I knew the sentence was correct. And then of course, as you mentioned, you're going to make a mistake. But I would get so frustrated with myself when I would make a mistake. I'm spending all of these hours and yet, and still I can't speak Korean fluently. I, I'm getting uh, embarrassed or I feel shy and I'm not a shy person because I can't speak this language properly. So again, it goes back to why I don't focus on grammar because that was holding me back, even though it's important. So I changed and I actually started focusing on listening more listening to my Korean friends when they were having conversations, watching more television programs, Korean dramas, and paying attention more to their conversations. So you're actually learning grammar inadvertently as you're listening to the conversations and paying attention, but you're learning it in an enjoyable environment, if that makes sense. So what I noticed happening was my, my friends started saying, hey, you're sounding more natural now. Hey, Tiff, hey, you don't sound like you used to sound. Simply because I was trying to mimic what I was hearing and what I was seeing uh, while watching Korean dramas. Now, I was at the intermediate and advanced level, so it was okay for me to do that, to stop focusing on the grammar books because I did have a foundation. I knew the structures. Mm -hmm. um, but again, as you mentioned, I'm a perfectionist. So that was very difficult. That transition from stop focusing on the books and just focus on people's conversation, trying to mimic them. When you're an individual who likes structure, I love structure. I love organization to leave that behind and do something else, even though it's mm -hmm. structure, it was very difficult. So again, I understand with students how difficult it is when I may say, Hey, stop focusing on the book and let's do it a different way. It is a very difficult transition. I hope that you enjoyed today's tips. I hope your friends also feel inspired by Tiffany's advice by sharing this video with them. I also recommend that you watch my interview with Gavin Roy next. You'll see that achieving your fluency dream can be possible if you start with just one simple step. Let's watch a clip of Gavin's advice on that. The Nike slogan, just do it. I've heard so many, so many people saying, I'm so afraid for my first conversation. Can you give me tips? And yes, I can give you tips, but at the end of the day, you are going to have to do it and it won't be easy. That first conversation will probably be the worst conversation you've ever had. You know, the awkward, you're going to feel bad about yourself. There's no way to go around it, but there's so much good that comes out of it. And